So what we got going on right now is we have our vehicles marked. We have uh, one, two, three, four. I appreciate y'all. Everybody helping trying to find my grandpa. 74 year old Richard Ritz has been missing now for nearly a year. He was last seen in September of 2020. Family's grateful volunteer underwater search team Adventures with Purpose decided to take their case and search this part of the river. So we're only dealing with like a, a six month old missing persons case. And with this one, part of the information that we also have is he said, hey, if I ever come up missing, I just want you to know I've gone on a really long fishing trip. Right now, I do know that there's a Volvo over here. And as far as I know, there's no other vehicles here. Now my best friend Tina's dad has been missing since September of 2020. Both him and his vehicle has vanished. So many people put their two cents in, many suggest he just needed a break. Not likely because Tina and her dad are extremely close. They always worried about each other. It has been so hard watching her go through this. I would give anything to find Rich so she can have closure. She knew fairly quickly uh, when he wasn't calling her or his friends uh, that he was dead. But it's the not knowing what happened to him that drives her the craziest. Her dad had been drinking that evening. It's quite possible he drove right into the river. I know it's a long shot because the river is long, so you may not want to try. But I thought it could that I thought that it couldn't hurt out anyways. I really commend you two for the work that you are doing. Compassion and empathy is so rare these days. So Misty, uh, know that we are now working on the case, looking for uh, Rich, and we'll do everything we can for uh, you and Tina. Let's see if we can find Rich today. If not today, hopefully tomorrow. tomorrow. We're gonna be up here, you know, for the next couple of days up here in Portland. So let's get do our part. Yeah. Uh, additional information on Rich for you, Sam. 74 years old, driving a 1999 matte black Toyota 4Runner, and he was last seen at 501 North Lombard. So let's drop the sonar and see if we can find him here. If not, I think that Sabi Island is going to be uh, the key in all this. That's where he really enjoyed hanging out at. Make sure that's covered. Okay. First thing we like to do, uh, starting off on these episodes, if you've never seen sonar before, is just to kind of explain it so that way you know what you're looking at as you're, you know, watching this episode. And this one over here is a live scope. So what's actually happening in real time, like if a fish was to swim by or we go over the top of the car, you're seeing it in real time. We can back up, go forward, and pinpoint our position on this one. This one over here is kind of a picture in time. So as we go over it, you'll see the screen come across. Same thing here, as we go over it, you'll see the screen come across. We have two that we're working with here. One is down imaging. So anything from the top here where it says zero to the bottom is water column from the, from the boat to the bottom of the river or the lake. Currently it's at 49 feet and you can see the little you know grid lines here, 45 feet, 49 feet. So you can see that we're coming up on 50 feet here. Now this one here is side imaging. So with this one, Currently, we're casting 75 feet to the right, 75 feet to the left. When we get in deeper water, we kind of like to change this, and so we'll uh, bump it up to, let's say, 100 feet is what we'll do. So we're casting 100 feet to the right, 100 feet to the left. Now, anything from the boat here, black water column is, so it's 50 feet deep. So as this comes in and out, it's going to correlate with this depth number over here. So right now what we're gonna do is start scanning at the boat ramp, work our way out. We'll do some passes up and down and clear this area. So I have a vehicle right here. It's upside down. Woo! All right, we've got one right here. because you said the Volvo's over there. Yeah, so this one I've not, I've not seen this one. Like we're right over the top of it right here. Uh, how deep are we? Uh, 25 feet. 25? Yeah. Let me see if I can get another good reading. So see, see it coming up? Yeah. So upside down is my guess. This is what it looks like. 
Now we're past it. Okay, so here's another one right here. I don't know what this one is. It almost looks like a Porsche. So that, that one's older, so that one is not as embedded a little bit. Let's see, let's see if I can get back over the top of it. It's like right here. And that, and that could be the Volvo that Nate was talking about. It's probably that Volvo. I don't know. Is this another vehicle here? No, that's a dog there. Well, we have two vehicles so far. That shouldn't be sunk. Oh, see, yeah, it still has a steering wheel and everything. another vehicle over here. He's right back over here, on my right. I feel like you kind of saw it. I feel like that's it right there. That's it? Yeah. So it was off to the right a little bit. So if we take a look at that line that we just came down. All right, so what is that? It's uh, on its wheels. back up. Did you see it on live? Yeah. Alright, so it's right there. See it? Yeah. Oh yeah, it looks like it's on its wheels. Yeah, we, we found three so far. One could be a potential SUV. Okay. So we're just going to go ahead and mark everything in the area and we're just going to suit up and dive everything. More magnets, right? Yeah, we need more magnets, more buoys. Got the magnet on it, brother. Yep. Got it. Good job. Okay, you should be on one right now. Like you just landed on the roof, Sam. Yep. Yeah, these ones are buried. I want to get back over to that one that could potentially be an SUV. Yep, there it is. Right there. Okay, drop right there. Okay, so we're going down 30 feet. You should be close to the bottom until you got the knot. You only need like another three feet and you're there. There you go. Okay. Yeah, like this one looks fresher. Like this, we've not been on this one before. And out of all of them, I'm most interested in this one right now. Are you on it? No. There we go. Okay. Well, oh, jeez. Look, look at that one. That's so clear. Yeah, that one's. Look at the tires, tires. It's super clear. Oh, we gotta mark that one. Like that one looks like an SUV for sure. Hey Doug, you got another buoy? Yeah, I mean that one could be an SUV. So we're straight off of that buoy. Well, we're right between that buoy. So right between that buoy and that bu the, and the dock. Right off of this buoy, right here. So those are my two fresh ones for today. This looks like we found a couple that are fresh. This one could certainly be an SUV, and that one over there could certainly be an SUV. Coming up on it right now. Okay, go ahead and drop. Okay, you should be landing on it right now. You should be on it. Yes, sure. Good, nice, clean drop. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, that, that one definitely looks like an SUV.
take another pass or two and see if there's any other fresh ones. Like that, like that one I know is not fresh. That one is not fresh. Potential SUV, potential SUV. So what we got going on right now is we have our vehicles marked. We have uh, one, two, three, four. Jared is uh, going out right now. He's gonna hit the buoy, drop straight down, and then come straight back up to make sure no boats run over him. So we're making sure to be as safe as possible. We do have Doug on the OTS comms. He's in communication with Jared. So we have a wire right here, goes all the way into the water, that uh, communicates with Jared when he's in the water. So we have uh, communications, Aquacom, that's OTS. That's where we're at right now. We're gonna attempt to go up river. What do you say? Copy that. You're clear right now. Nothing coming to or from. Copy, copy. All right. I'm good. I'm going down. He said he's going down. He's clear. He's good. So the one he's dropping down on first, this is the newest one, or what looks to be the newest on our sonar. Um, we're not sure. I mean, as, as far as safety is concerned, like right here where we're positioned this close to a dock. Yeah, uh, high This traffic. particular channel very busy uh, we got multiple targets right here so it's very important that we use these comms so he knows what's above him what's coming what's going you know safety first when possible oh this might be our vehicle it's a Toyota pickup or a SUV it's a Toyota pickup SUV <laughs> SUV yeah looking for a forerunner uh, four door He's, he's looking for the emblems now. Four door. Four runners have four doors. This is a four runner! Nice! Do have a copy? Do you know what the license plate we're looking for? No, sir. It's a four runner. It is a four runner? I copy that. I'm looking for the license plate now. Oh, man. All right, Black 4Runner. Have it right here. All right, I am on the driver's side. Front. Black 4Runner. Cannot identify if What's the guy's name? Richard Rich, right? Steering wheel. I cannot identify You're inside. You're all clear. Nothing's coming to or from. You are clear. It's coming up. You're still all clear topside. I was just trying to relay uh, whether or not you would like to recover the license plate off the vehicle. Yes, I have the license plate. He's got the license plate. I never looked right. at the paperwork to see what it is. Can you look that up real quick while I'm looking around? Can you spell the individual's name that's missing? What do you say the name Richard is? R-I-P-Z. It's going to be an Oregon plate reading seven one six G P. E, that's George Paul Echo. 716 George Paul Echo. Call uh, 911, we have their vehicle. We confirmed we have their vehicle. So first thing we're going to do is, it's now identified as a crime scene. Confirmation on the inside. 
I don't have any confirmation on the inside. It almost looks as though a whole bunch of stuff has been moved from the back to the front, almost as though it was all placed there intentionally. The, when the windows are down enough, somebody cannot come out as though things were placed in the front and then rolled in with a potential in the back. I don't have any confirmation on this though. 911, what is the address of the emergency? Yeah, Cathedral Park, boat ramp. Okay, tell me exactly what happened. Uh, so this, we're working a uh, missing persons cold case. We're uh, divers that uh, look for vehicles underwater with missing lo loved ones. And we have identified uh, finding his vehicle. I have not made confirmation whether he is inside or not. Okay, uh, who are you with? Uh, Adventures with Purpose. All right, in reference Please. to the St. John's Bridge, bridge, is it north or south of the bridge? Uh, the boat ramp is west of the bridge. West of the bridge? Yes, sir. Like yeah, 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 we're at Cathedral Park boat launch. All right, do you have the vehicle description? I do. It's a 1999 Toyota 4Runner. Do I have the plate in hand? It is a 7, 716 Golf Peter Edward. And what color? It's a uh, matte black, and it's ups, okay. upside down roughly 100 feet uh, off the dock, 25 feet deep. All right, and do you have the person's name? Yes, his name is Richard Ritz, R-I-T-Z. And you just need a birthday chance? Uh, I don't. I know he's uh, 74 years old. Okay. And he went missing uh, September of 2020. Are you at that location now? Yes, we are. Uh, dive team suited up, just about ready to go in. Just got done talking to the detective. The family has also uh, just shown up as well. And with this one, I mean really within, say 15 minutes from now, they should be popping windows and they should know if he's in there. Yep. They, they're gonna be taking down. They've got a uh, mesh uh, body bag back here as well. It sounds like, I think I already covered this, but they are going to be pulling this vehicle out tonight and then they're going to identify what the other vehicle is and if it's associated with anything. Yeah. Uh, the detective said that right now within the Portland area, she has roughly 100 missing persons cold cases up here. Uh, not all of them are vehicle related, but we did get her card. So, um, you know, we are up here in Portland for the next uh, couple days. So we'll identify if there's any other cold cases that we can solve. And maybe one of these vehicles, that one over there, another. might solve another one tonight. Anyway, the family's here, so uh, we'll see if we can chat with them in uh, just a few minutes. And I did speak with the detective as well about the license plate. And this is one of those things we run across from time to time, is that the, the, the license plate is just so sentimental to the family. And so I have cleared it with her that they do not need to put that in evidence this time that we can get that to the family. Good, the good, good. So we'll chat with them in just a few minutes. Sounds great. Misty? Uh, my friend, Misty. Your friend, Misty shared information with us that you know she said hey and she wrote me like this great big, beautiful letter saying how amazing you are and your family are and, and so she was telling us all about it and really pleaded with us to you know, take another look at it and so today just happened to be the day that we were down working on Ralph Brown uh, we exhausted all of our leads down there we had some time to come up here and you know based upon the Lombard I really felt as though Sabi Island with all the information I knew was kind of his fishing spot and where he would go but the, with this one being the closest to you know, Lombard, we had to check Cathedral Park here for you first. In doing so, we identified four vehicles down there. Two of them were fresh. And so the one that we chose to dive on first was actually your father's vehicle. So I did talk to the detective, and she said that you can have this. Sit down. So that is for you. I took that off the uh, floor of the foyer. Um, the windows were cracked just a little bit. I was not able to identify whether he was inside. So right now the divers are getting in the water. Um, any Anytime we identify, it immediately becomes a crime scene. And so at that point, we're hands off, and so we call them immediately. So we've done our part, and then if they need our assistance, we're here for them. Uh, but Multnomah County Sheriff's Office, they have an incredible dive team, uh, so they're very confident in what needs to be done at this point. And so they're suited up, they're getting in the water now, and within 15, 20 minutes, I mean, you're gonna have answers as to if your father's inside. Or not. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. Is, is there anything we can do for you? I just really appreciate you guys. Okay. I miss you. She told me she, she, um, she wrote you guys, and I was like, my daughter already had them go out and they couldn't find anything, so I didn't know it was a different. 
Yeah, and yeah, and she asked me, she said, you know, why were you guys able to find it when somebody could not, you know, somebody else had already went out? It just comes down to, you know, we never throw anybody under the bus. It's just a matter of knowing how to use your equipment and what equipment that they have. You know, we've been, you know, some police agencies just happen to have older equipment where they've gone to training six months ago and then they've never used it since. You know, so we're out on the water all the time and so we just have our equipment dialed. So today was the day that we were able to find the forerunner for you, okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you're, you. You're welcome. Let me know if you need anything else, okay? okay. Absolutely none of this could be possible without all of you being a part of this. Telling us where these cases are at and just watching, liking, sharing, subscribing, donations, everything, you know, it all comes together. So on that note, thank you. It's been a long day. Another family has answers. And on that note, thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Later, later. Bye-bye.